Hello everyone, my name is Bree and I'm the community coordinator for the Gathering for Open Science Hardware, otherwise known as GOSH. And I'm gonna be giving a presentation on the community today. Uh, I do quickly wanna note that this presentation, the first couple minutes are being recorded after the actual welcome call was given. Uh, that's because during the actual presentation, um, the first few minutes were cut out, didn't have them recorded. So I'm going back and re-recording this. Um, but yes, this is going to be a recording of the very first GOSH welcome call that was held on August 15th, uh, giving an overview on the GOSH community. So a little bit about what we will cover in this presentation. Um, first, we'll give some background on the open science hardware community, uh, GOSH, uh, its governance structure, uh, and the global open science hardware roadmap. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about the GOSH gatherings and other GOSH events. Uh, we'll touch on some of the publications and funding programs that GOSH has done this year. And then we'll take a closer look at the regional open science hardware communities. We'll also discuss how to get involved and share resources for new members. So before we get started and before we start talking about GOSH, um, we should probably talk a little bit about what open science hardware is. Um, so I share, I'm sharing a definition here um, that was pulled from the open source hardware definition, but tweaked a little bit um, to reflect the nature of science hardware. Uh, so I'm gonna restate this definition now. Science hardware encompasses the tools and machinery that we use for scientific endeavors. For example, a microscope or environmental sensor. Uh, open science hardware refers to science hardware that is open source or free to use, change, study, and distribute. So I like to share that definition, but I also want to talk a little bit about what open science hardware is um, to different people. Um, so El Plance interviewed several GOSH community members at the last GOSH gathering. Uh, and a GOSH gathering is an event that I'll get to in a little bit. Um, and during these interviews, um, they asked each of the participants at the gathering to describe what open science hardware means to them uh, and what its importance is. So I, these interviews are fantastic. There's over a dozen interviews that were done um, and it's an incredible resource for understanding what open science hardware is and its purposes. Um, and they were also done in both Spanish and English. So um, you'll see in this presentation that I also have links to the interviews in these slides as well. Uh, so you can check them out if you'd like. So we talked a little bit more about open science hardware. Uh, now let's chat a little bit about what the gathering for open science hardware or GOSH community is. Um, so GOSH is a global community of artists, researchers, activists, hackers, hardware developers, all sorts of people that are dedicated to making open science hardware ubiquitous by 2025. Um, so by making open science hardware open, more people have access to the tools that we use to do science. Um, the biggest goal as a community is to just support the advancement of open hardware and specifically open science hardware and to make it more mainstream and widespread, hence ubiquitous by 2025. I do also want to note as well, so you'll often hear GOSH referred to simply as GOSH or GOSH community, um, but there's a lot of interesting history around the name and the acronym for GOSH. So GOSH stands for the Gathering for Open Science Hardware because GOSH, is, it's a convening place, it's a meeting place, it's a network, both in person at gatherings as well as virtual on the GOSH forum. Um, so it's this convening place for the open science hardware community. Um, much of the, as I said before, the GOSH community is centered around these gatherings held all across the world. But GOSH has also come to stand for the global open science hardware community. Um, but because, as I said before, GOSH is a global community of not only hardware makers, but artists, researchers, and so much more. Um, so there are several discussions that have taken place over the years um, regarding the importance of the GOSH acronym and how it can be translated into different languages as well. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out this forum thread that I have linked in the notes or in the slideshow, because it's a really really interesting discussion um, that the community has has taken into about what GOSH stands for and how to use it in different contexts and especially uh, in different translations. All right. Whew. The GOSH gatherings. So I mentioned these before um, and basically a lot of work has been done in the community and is centered around these super large international gatherings known as the GOSH gatherings. Um, so the first gathering was held in 2016 
This took place at CERN and it led to the creation of the GOSH Manifesto, which is a super important document that outlines the guiding principles and values for the GOSH community. Um, after that, the next gathering was in Chile in 2017. And it was here that the community came together to create a roadmap that outlined actions and steps that were needed to make open hardware ubiquitous by 2025. And I'll get to this roadmap in a couple slides, so don't worry. We'll go back to it. Um, yeah, so the last gathering that took place for GOSH was in 2018. It was in Shenzhen in China. And 2019 to 2021, there were no physical gatherings, although the community was still quite active virtually on the forum. Uh, and they continued to work through some of the activities and actions laid out by the GOSH roadmap. Um, but we can't forget to say, as most of you know, that the next gathering will be this year in Panama from October 26th to 29th. Um, so yeah. Super exciting stuff. Uh, that's a bit more about the GOSH gatherings, which is again, what the community was centered around, what it was born out of this very critical event in the community. Oof, yeah, I need a little bit of water real quick. All right, awesome. Where are we? So throughout 2021 and 2022, GOSH released a series of profiles on different community members where they shared their experiences attending or running a GOSH event. Um, these profiles were written by a community member uh, named Marcella Bosch, and it was featured in the first GOSH community events framework. And this was a really key document um, that was created to pass harder knowledge and experience about the GOSH events to the next generation of GOSH organizers so they too can know how to run a GOSH event. Um, so these profiles are really cool and they're showcased on the GOSH blog and Medium page. And I just wanted to pull from some of these profiles because they really showcase what some people call the GOSH feeling or the GOSH spirit, the GOSH vibe. It has several different um, ways of being described. Basically kind of this feeling of connectedness and belonging that many community members have described. So I will read this first quote to you that comes from community member Jenny Malloy. So she says, I think that Gosh's vibe is a mixture of people that would normally never be in the same room, artists, scientists, educators, policymakers, and more, um, together in a way that is not uh, demarcating them as one thing or another, bonding over something that they're all passionate about, open hardware and science. Everybody's trying to recognize what each other brings to the table with equal value and respect. People usually say they would never have met these other people before and that they feel they're not in the room as a tokenistic social scientist or artist in a science meeting, but that everybody bringing themselves and their expertise to the party. Thank you, Jenny. Cool. So I did pull another quote as well. Um, this comes from community member Nano, and it really, again, hits on the support importance of sharing, openness, and collaboration. So Nano says that one of the keys of GOSH is that discussions are always oriented towards doing. Doing is a strong key of the movement. The people who attend GOSH are quite down to earth. They always think about doing hardware in the physical world for real users beyond ideas. The other key idea is the desire to share. Everybody wants to share what they have and expects the same from others. And other places people say, I did this by myself, it's mine. Here it is, look. I did this. Tell me how you can contribute. You are always hoping to be able to build on what the other person has done. We all bring our own little brick, feeling sure that what they are going to find in the other person's bricks will be useful. People are interested in scientific success, but also in sharing it. So they open up. There's a click. I'm showing you my cards because I'm not playing against you. We are going to play together. So thank you, Nano2, for that. Another awesome quote from that profile series. So I wanna quickly um, discuss the governance structure for GOSH. Um, so GOSH started receiving a little bit more organizational and financial support in the past two years. It became clear that a governance structure was needed to help make decisions about community funds, but in a way that still reflects the values of the community that was set out in that manifesto years ago. Um, so what ended up happening is a long governance process took place and they actually decided that a GOSH community council should be in place and will be responsible for the governance of the GOSH community. So this GOSH community council that Penn, who's with us today, is seated on, um, they basically oversee and delegate all tasks, questions, and issues related to governance of the GOSH community. They help coordinate the allocation of community activities like regional events and collaborative hardware development programs. 
Um, and these elections are held every year, so you will see some action on the forum around May uh, when we're having our annual elections. So, yeah. So I mentioned a few slides ago, the GOSH roadmap. Um, this is a super critical document for the community and it was created collectively um, by everyone, not everyone in the community, but it was a collective process by community members during and after the 2017 gathering. So this document, it guides the actions of the community, which includes creating institutional and funding support structures, preparing guidelines for open hardware designers, funders, and newcomers, engaging and broadening open science hard, the open science hardware community, and creating a common pool of open educational resources and mentoring programs. So this roadmap is an excellent resource. Um, it's an excellent thing to look to if you ever want to know, okay, what are the actions of the global open science hardware movement? And we also have a couple of community events, one of which you are in right now for the GOSH community. Um, so the welcome calls, as I said at the beginning, are brand new and we're trying them out. We wanna have an opportunity for new members to find out more about GOSH. Uh, but in addition to that, we also do community calls, which similar to this are more structured and facilitated because they feature one to two presentations from community members, but there's still time for discussion and updates from other community members as well. Um, so that does take place uh, during the community calls. But they're an excellent time to hear about super cool um, open science hardware projects across the world. So definitely recommend attending. Um, we do have a very like lower stakes, really social kind of event um, known as the book club. So a group of us usually meet about once a month, once every two months to discuss that we be a book that we're reading together uh, and decide on the next reading. So that's a really fun opportunity as well for anyone that wants to read and, and catch up with us. So. All right. Gosh has also released a couple publications in the past two years, um, which I want to talk about as well. So the first one that I want to touch on, and I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about the profile series, is that Gosh has a super long document. It's, I think, over 100 pages of information on how to plan and run a GOSH event. And it's known as the, fra the GOSH framework for running community events. Um, so in April of 2021, we had about 15 GOSH gathering organizers that all met and drafted up this framework for running events. Um, the reason for doing this was of course, to capture that GOSH spirit that I showed earlier in those profiles um, of openness, collaboration, um, belonging, things like that, um, just so it could be replicated at future global and regional GOSH events. Again, the key here, not wanting to lose that knowledge that um, they have and passing it on to the next generation of organizers. Um, so yeah, super great document. It features over 23 profiles on GOSH community members who have been at past gatherings or helped to run them. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, in addition to the uh, GOSH framework for running community events, we also had several policy briefs that were released throughout March and July of 2021. Um, so the first one was focused on open hardware and technology transfer, convened over 15 open hardware practitioners and also technology transfer officers. And it resulted in the policy brief that we have all the way on the right, uh, which is titled Open Hardware is Ready to Help Technology Transfer Offices Maximize the Impact of Academic Research. Um, after that, we, hold on, I'm letting someone in. After that, the second writing workshop was focused on open science hardware and international policy. This one actually convened nearly 30 policymakers from across the globe, um, and it resulted in the policy brief, Open Hardware, a Key for Accelerating Science and Technology Towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then the one that we have in the middle was basically throughout June and July, we had a series of salon style meetings to help explore open hardware with funding institutions. Um, so this convened about 20 research funders. Um, they took place all throughout June and July, several meetings happened. Um, and the purpose of these meetings was to connect these open hardware funders um, with the broader funders of open research and help them develop guidelines on open hardware and more specifically open science hardware. Um, so this actually resulted in a series of write-ups that provide a summary of what was discussed at each of these meetings uh, and are su super resourceful and informative, especially for those research funder audiences. And on a more exciting note in 2022, Gosh is also hoping to release another series of policy briefs uh, and research papers. So be sure to be on the lookout for those. This will be quite exciting. 
In addition to some of these publications in the past uh, year or two, GOSH has also run several funding programs, uh, two of which being the Regional Events Funding and Collaborative Development Program. Unfortunately, rounds have closed for 2022, but be sure to check the GOSH forum for updates on future rounds and also just check the GOSH forum to see what some of these events and projects are up to. It's some super cool stuff. Um, the Regional Events Funding Program is for groups that want to host an event, a workshop, conference, get together, any sort of meeting aimed at supporting open science hardware. And this year, we are seeing regional gatherings that have taken place in Cameroon, Argentina, Peru, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and many more countries. Um, so that is quite exciting. And on top of that, we also do have the GOSH Collaborative Development Program which is for organizers or organizations, sorry, and groups that are working on existing or new open science hardware projects. Uh, and the aim of this is building collaboration with industry experts, groups, and organizations. So in the roadmap that I mentioned earlier, the GOSH roadmap, um, one of the key areas uh, of action is growth. So the growth of the open science hardware, the global open science hardware community, um, but doing it so it's in a localized regional way, um, a lot of the global open science hardware movement and the GOSH community itself historically has been very decentralized. Um, so a lot of importance has been placed on having these regional, more local um, open science hardware communities. Um, so some of the ones that we have is the Africa Open Science and Hardware Community or Africa OSH. Um, we have REGOSH, which is in Latin America and Great Lakes GOSH in North America. And I do want to give a shout out to Kafid, who's here as well, who serves as our liaison between Africa OSH and GOSH. Um, so roles like that have been super key and super essential in helping those connections between the more regional open science hardware communities uh, and the more broader global GOSH community. So I also wanted to just share with you all some upcoming open science hardware events. Um, so obviously we all know that we have the GOSH gathering happening um, in October, but these aren't the only open science hardware things that are going on. So August 30th, we're gonna have a GOSH community call with a presentation on the 2022 Digital Naturalism Conference known as Dynacon. Um, there's a link right there if you wanna register for that. Um, so community member and previous community council member, Andy Quitmire is gonna be giving a talk on the conference he just ran. Should be super cool, took place in Sri Lanka. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, aside from that, again, a little bit more of a lower stakes social environment. If you wanna to come to the next GOSH book club, that is taking place on September 6th at 12 UTC. Uh, we will be reading Building Open Source Hardware DIY Manufacturing for Hackers and Makers by Alicia Gibb. And let's see, Africa Osh is having its summit and that's gonna take place from September 29th to October 1st in Yaoundé, Cameroon. Uh, Rigosh is having a meeting that's taking place in Mendoza, Argentina from September 20th to 23rd. And the iGEM community is, hope, is hosting an open science hardware hackathon in Peru. I do not uh, know necessarily the dates for that yet, but you can click on that link and get uh, connected with the iGEM community if you're interested in, in attending. They've done some promotion for the event and they're very much looking forward to it. Yeah, we're pretty much done. And the slide after this is just a list of resources. So I wanted to let you all know if you want to get involved with GOSH, um, I mean, you already are involved with GOSH right now by being at this meeting, but if you want to continue to be involved and stay connected, I definitely recommend checking out this welcome package. It's full of resources on the community, um, ways to get involved in it, things to do, uh, a newsletter for GOSH that you can sign up to and all sorts of useful information. And then again, this is just all my resources, all the different things I mentioned that you can click on throughout this presentation, but also you can just come back here at the end if you want a more succinct summary of it all. Uh, so yeah, that is everything from me. I think that's all I have. So thank you everyone for coming, listening to this presentation. Um, yeah, I'll stop recording. Thank you.